Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Nicole with MorningChores.com and today I'm going to walk you through as I plan out my garden for the 2023 growing season. In today's video, I'm going to chat with you about the importance of planning out your garden and I'm gonna talk about those reasons and how it makes planting so much easier in the upcoming months. I'm also going to walk you through how I plan my garden, showing you my lists and my drawings so that hopefully it can give you some inspiration on how you can plan your garden for the upcoming growing season. And then I'm also just gonna share some tips and ideas along the way. So grab a cup of tea, coffee, sit down in a comfy spot and let's get started. There are so many different ways to garden and I know for many years for myself, I would just kind of go out there and plant what I wanted every year. I didn't really give it much thought, but once I started trying to grow food to feed my family from season to season, that's when I really started taking the initiative to plan out my garden spaces. And it's made a huge difference. It's made my planting season much more efficient. I feel like it goes a lot more smoothly and actually more quickly. And I also feel like I go into the growing and the garden season with a purpose and with direction. And so I feel like I'm getting more out of my garden because I take this extra step in the winter time to plan things out and get an idea for what I want to accomplish. I also think the planning stage is really fun just because it helps you set goals and it helps you almost dream about what you want to accomplish in your garden. So it kind of gives you that hope and that inspiration of, wow, I could really do a lot this year. And it also helps you kind of learn from the previous years, helps you kind of reflect back and say, okay, I could do this a little differently. I could do that a little better, or maybe this didn't work out for me, whereas this did. And so I feel like each year I get a little bit better at my gardening skills by simply doing this step. Another important tip or reason that I like to plan out my garden is it really helps me utilize my garden space much more effectively. I feel like by sitting down and actually looking at what I want to do on paper, it helps me use my garden space and make the most of it. So now that we've discussed the whys, let's discuss the hows. How do we go about planning our garden spaces. There's lots of ways that you could accomplish this and it really just depends on what works best for you. Some people may prefer to type it out on a computer or a spreadsheet. Others may simply just wanna have a simple family discussion about it. Um, I like to actually draw out my garden spaces and do it that way. So it really just depends on what works best for you. I think as long as you're actually coming up with a general plan, I think that's the most important thing. So my first step in how to do this is to recall back on the previous growing season. Think about what worked and what didn't, what worked really well, or maybe you need to tweak some things. I know a lot of people like to keep garden journals. I don't really do that. I keep one general journal and I just write down everything in here. I write down recipes. I write down quotes that I come across and books that I've read. And I also write things that worked really well in the garden and things that didn't. So sometimes I'll refer back to my journal, but I also just like recalling back and remembering. And this may not work for everyone, but I just find that that works best for me. So I'll really sit down and just think about, okay, what worked? really, really well last year and what did it. So for example, I feel like I had one of my best years for potatoes. I got a really good harvest and they grew really, really well. So I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing. I might tweak a little bit more. Uh, another thing you might wanna recall back on is did you have enough of a certain produce? So for example, did you grow enough tomatoes to feed your family and provide all of your needs or do you need to plant a few more plants? So for me, I had plenty. I had plenty of tomatoes. It was the first year that I had enough tomatoes to eat through the summer and can to make my own pizza sauce and spaghetti sauce and things like that. I did not have to buy any tomatoes for canning. That was the first for me. So that was a huge accomplishment. So again, reflect back on what you accomplished in the previous growing season, what worked, what didn't. You can even sit down and make a list discuss it with your family, and this will help you set goals that are e easy to accomplish in the next growing season. The next step in the planning process is to make a list. And I already touched base on this a little bit, but we already recalled back to the previous growing season, 
kind of figured out what worked and what didn't. And from here, you want to make a list. So to get a little bit more of a close up to my list, I know you might not be able to read exactly, but I have three columns here. I have my staples, improvements, and then trials or things that I want to try that's new. And in my staples, I have basically what I grow every single year. These are things that we eat that I store up through the colder months for the next season. Um, so these are things that I always grow no matter what. And this may slightly change over the years, but it's pretty much always the same. So I have garlic, potatoes, tomatoes, asparagus, green beans, and lettuce. Those are things that I grow every year. Then the third column is improvements. So these are things that I've done in the previous years or in the last growing season, but I need to do better. So I might, you know, I might need to grow more of that item. Um, that's really true about my peppers. I never grow enough peppers. <laughs> so I'm going to try to plant some more pepper plants this year. Um, with my melons, I have not really had very good success with cantaloupes. So I'm going to try a different variety. So that's just my column of, okay, this kind of worked. I think I can improve upon it. Let's try something a little different. And then the last column is my trials or new items. So these are new things that I've never grown or maybe I have tried to grow, but it was a complete failure. And so I'm just gonna try a completely different variety. Um, so for example, mullein, I have tried to grow so many times uh, and it's never grown for me. So I'm gonna try one more time. And if it doesn't work, then I think I'm done. I'm gonna let that one go. But I wanna try some new medicinal herbs that I've never tried before. And I also wanna plant some more flowers, not particularly in my garden, but around the house. I'd like to plant some more hydrangea bushes and kind of do that. So you can also add flowers into the mix of this list as well as if, if you want to. But that's really it. So now on the back side of this same paper, I'm gonna draw out my garden spaces and kind of plan things out that way. So this is my planned out garden space and I drew my really big garden over here and these are all my raised beds and my cold frame and I have these in different places on the property so this is definitely not to scale. I just drew the spaces. I, that's just easier for me. So in my large garden here and again it's kind of tricky here. I'll turn it this way so you can read it a little bit better but I've got my garlic, which is already planted out there, tomatoes, peppers, asparagus, potatoes, squash, and melons. And my entrance to my garden's on this side, so my melon, you know, my melon row can't really go all the way to the end, but that just gives you kind of an idea of how I plan it out. And like I said, this may get tweaked when I actually go out there to plant. I might realize, oh, I need more space for my potatoes. So I might have to make my squash section and my melon section smaller, and that's okay. Uh, you gotta be flexible when you garden, for sure. Uh, and then over here are my raised beds, and this one I'm gonna do all cabbage. I wanna do purple cabbage and white cabbage, and that's one of those other things that I've tried in the past and it hasn't worked too well, so I'm really gonna hit it hard this year and really try to grow it, just because it's really good for you Everyone in the family likes it and it stores really well. So I really want to grow a lot of that. This raised bed is actually my daughter's raised bed. And I did have her plant some herbs in there, but she really likes to do flowers. So that's her space. Uh, this is my raspberry bed and they're already planted and out there. Um, so I don't really have to do anything with that. And this down here is my cold frame and I always plant lettuce in there. Lettuce does really, really well in my cold frame. So I'm just going to do the same thing every year. I pretty much plant just lettuce in my cold frame because it just works so well. So I will store this in a really handy place where it won't get lost so that when it comes to planting season, I am ready to go with my, with my plan here. And the last great thing about doing this step is that it will make seed ordering and figuring out what seeds I need so much easier, which we will be sharing in the next video coming out. So definitely stay tuned for that and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss that video because I'm gonna be sharing some of my top favorite seed companies to order from. I'm gonna kind of show you what seeds I order and we're gonna also go through my seed collection to see kind of what we need to order and what I don't need to order. 
and I'll kind of show you how I store my seeds. So it will be a really exciting video. So definitely stay tuned for that. You can also head over to morningchores.com where you'll find more information on sustainable living, gardening, and much, much more. Hope you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you on the next one.